Uh, where's producer? Right here. All right. Move out of the way of the webcam part. So plugin basic. Yep. Um, we're gonna call this. I mean, we can change the project name later. So let's just do the same thing. Amp Sim 2022, and let's use the DSP module. Sure. Uh, let's add the Visual Studio exporter because we're going to eventually build for Windows. And let's see, yep, we're going to put that Amp Sim 2022. Great. Let's check out some of this stuff. So we'll do for DSP. We'll do uh, that all looks good actually. I do like to use seventeen at least. That. And we should be good. I guess we can do our Visual Studio stuff over here. The only thing I really change is this. Instead of a DLL runtime, use a static runtime. And uh, that should be it. Mm -hmm. Cool. So let's open that. <clears throat> Cool. So let me make this bigger before I forget. And we're going to start without having a GUI. So we'll scroll down to the bottom. And let's go right here. Create editor. And we're going to do our typical return new generic editor. Um, generic audio processor editor. This, um, and before we do a initial build, let's put our tree state stuff and add one parameter so that we can see if uh, this is working. So we'll go here, we'll do our typical, um, get rid of all of that nonsense. <clears throat> We are also going to inherit from audio processor value and it doesn't want to autocomplete listener. Okay, I'm going to copy this because we are going to create a value tree. So I'll just call it tree state. Should I do M tree state? Sure. And then let's get our param change and uh, parameter layout. So I'll go into my snippets. Here is the uh, create parameter layout. And then here is the parameter changed. Cool. So let's construct the tree state. Here we go. Audio processor to connect to is this. Uh, no undo manager. I've still never messed with undo manager. Parameters and create parameter layout. That should be good there. And then in this uh, 
end if we're going to um, put our listeners. So let's see, can we get rid of... Yeah, I think we can get rid of this stuff, right? Cool, so here's the destructor. So let's put the parameter changed under that. Cool. Let's replace the class name. And we're changed and we need the layout. There we go. I take this. Um, before I make these IDs and names, let's do this to make sure that this parameter layout setup works. So, is that, is that it? Let's see. Let's see if we get any errors. This first build is going to take a while, but everything after should be pretty quick. Let me change to my multi-screen screen so I can check the chat. Nope, silent chat. All right. <clears throat> ah, perfect. It works. Okay. So while I'm here, let's create, um, let's see. What do we need? We need our globals folder. Yeah. So let me just pull up, uh, maybe like the Vitor DSP template or something. Let's go demos, uh, it'll be template, source. Yeah, the only thing I have is parameters. So we'll probably have a parameters and a DSP folder. So let's grab that. And I know you can't see anything I'm doing, but I'm just gonna put it in the project folder. And I'm going to get the producer and put that in there. So source, add existing, and parameters. Update that. So now we see parameters, and we can, yeah, it's going to have a whole bunch of stuff that we don't need. So let's, uh, let's see. I guess I'll keep high quality in there. And am I going to have presets? I don't know, maybe. Yeah, let's take it out for now. Okay, input, output, and high quality. All right. Cool, good enough. So let's link to that from the processor.
So now we should have access. So if I go and take a look at, so input ID and input name. So I should be able to put that in here. Yep. Input name. Perfect. Okay. While we're at it, we can add in the output. So blaze. <clears throat> Okay, we got input and output, great. So how do we want this sim to work? Let's see. Do we want input to be the only like drive or do we wanna have an input, output and a drive? I think input su suffices because most amps We'll have like a master volume, which is the output, and then they'll have a drive. And then if you think of something like a, a 6505 or a 5150, there's a pre-gain and a post-gain, and that's it, I think. So that would be like, yeah, your input and, and output. So that's probably good, input and output. Um, yeah, so let's uh, let's think about this for a minute. Let's plan this out a little bit. So... We're gonna to want to input and output. We could probably do a um, uh, maybe. I mean, not right now. Um, I don't really, I don't really know how to make it any better. I'm not really that good at making meters. Um, if I come up with something or if I learn something new that makes the meters better, I'll. Um, I'll add to it, but right now that's that's pretty much the extent of my uh, meter creation skill. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna want some EQ, so let's do um... yeah. You mean a VU as in like the the one with like a needle that goes left and right. Somebody in the, the Viator DSP um, Discord uh, made one. Um, he had posted it in general. Um, it's a compressor, and he made like a VU, so maybe he'll um, be willing to share with you how he did it. I'm also gonna want um, I'm gonna want an EQ section, but I want a little maybe a little bit more control than a normal amp synth. So like maybe like low, low, mid, mid, and high. So like four EQ um, settings. But let's start with just um, getting the input output um, convolution uh, working. So. Oh, okay, maybe I'll um maybe I'll message him and see um if he respond to me. All right, so let's see. Uh let's get some convolution going. Pull something up real quick. I've already made one recently, so I'm just gonna look at that so that I don't waste too much time.
Okay, so we definitely need um, a process spec and um, oh yeah, no problem. Wave Morpher, good to have you. Uh, let's see, so we need a process spec and we need a convolution to start with. So we're gonna have, uh, I think it's in DSP, right? Process spec spec. Uh, yeah, and then we're going to have convolution, um, I guess I'll call it speaker module. And actually, I'm going to put it public because we're going to eventually have a file um, open thing. Uh, no, I mean... It's not really going to be a specific amp. I'm not going to like set up an amp and take measurements and stuff like that. <clears throat> it's just going to be uh, whatever it turns into. It'll be a unique amp. So we got that speaker module. We're definitely going to have to prepare um, the IR. So let's go into prepare. So what we'll do, we got to take care of our spec stuff. Uh, what is it? Maximum block size. Yes. It puts a sample for oh, samples per block. Sample rate is equal to sample rate and uh, num channels. Get total number output channels. And then we'll take our convolution object. And we'll just call prepare. It's spec. And then we'll also, let's see, should we load a default IR? I think we should. Yeah. So let's include a random IR in the, uh, the uh, amp sim. So let's see, I got, I downloaded some recently. So I'm going to open up that at AntSim 2022 source. I'm just going to put it in there. So I'm going to make another finder window. I've got, uh, yeah, this uh, multiple. Straight and 45. That would be cool to blend between. Yeah, let's uh, eventually add a, a method in the amp to, to load two um, IRs and blend between them. All right, let's get, uh, let's see, straight. What does this text say? Let's just take this, oh, center 45, let's see. I'm not really sure. Let's, uh, let's just take this edge straight. Cool. I'm gonna put that in source. And I'm gonna add it in. Cool, and now, so it's in our project. So now we can uh, load it in by default. Speaker module dot, um, let's see, load impulse response. We're gonna use this one, the source data one. So this is the one that we can use the binary data and it is called guitar something, yep, that. And then the other argument is the size. Why is it not auto-completing? 
So this part is uh, kind of weird. It'll, oh, wait. Oh. oh. Binary data. Guitar wave size. So this is going to be not true or false. It's going to be uh, ESP convolution um, stereo. And then it's like, yes. Yeah, it's very weird. Uh, convolution again, and this one was trim. And then size T, always put zero. Okay, that should load in the impulse response. And uh, now we can actually do it. We're going to get rid of this. We're going to make an audio block. We got a block there. And then we're going to say speaker module dot process and it takes in the regular processing context that every other juice module takes in. So process context replacing float and the block. Um, and that's pretty much it. Now the um, there's going to be a volume drop, so we need to add some um, compensation. But let's make sure it works. So let's build that. Cool. I'm going to have to put it in my library uh, folder because um, plugin doctor will only read actually I don't want to do it in plugin doctor let's just load it up in logic oh wait let me have to pause real quick and make sure that logic isn't uh, showing something that it shouldn't Okay, we're all good. <clears throat> so let me move that to the other folder. So I'm gonna find it. Amp sim builds. So original. Need to go to my library folder. Audio plugins components. Yep. Perfect, okay. So let's load that up and plug in Doctor. Get rid of this old one. Cool. So it is loaded in there. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell what the volume difference is. So let's check it out in Logic. All right, so y'all won't be able to hear logic. Let me adjust this real quick. All right, um, let's see, did y'all hear that? Oh yeah, you should be able to hear that, looks like it. Okay, so right now we're getting about negative six on this um, loop. So let's put in our amp sim thing.
So it looks like it needs about 6 dB a game. Yeah, it looks like it needs about 6 dB a game. So let's do that while we're while we're here. So we're just going to make a gain module. Oh, you know what? Let me, uh, well, I'm right here. Just gonna rename a couple of these. So let's call this um, speaker compensate. Sure. So we gotta do our normal stuff. We gotta prepare it. So let's do. Um, Pair with spec. Uh, we also need to do we really need to do this? I mean it's not bad. Yeah, let's do it. So ramp duration in seconds. Let's just do 20 milliseconds. And then we'll set the actual decibel level. Set gain decibels 6 dB. Oh, pass it up. Yep. Cool. Like that. Cool. I think we should be able to tell now in plugin doctor since we saw it the first time. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's definitely louder. Okay, cool, so that works. One thing we could do as well is, uh, I need an actual guitar loop. Uh, yeah, let me open Logic. And I have some like gent stuff that I recorded Uh, let's see here. Let's just take some kind of, like, what is this? Oh, great. Sure, let's take that. All right. I'm just going to, um, let's see, export as audio file. And uh, let's see, I'm just going to put it on the desktop so I know where it is. Heavy chug number 5.15. Very good. Cool, so we got a guitar riff to work with. So let's load that bad boy on there. All right, 
cool. So let's go back here and let's add some distortion. Now, I think the easiest thing is let's add in the, the Viator DSP um, library module to the project. So let's go to modules, add from a specified folder. We'll go to documents for DSP Viator modules. There we go. Now, if we look in the folder, we should be able to see them, yep, right here. So DSP, so we've got, let's see, Bit Crusher, we've got Distortion. I don't remember what's all in here, so let's see. Oh, we've got Hard Soft Fuzz Tube Saturation Lo-Fi. Okay, let's, uh, I don't know, let's just try, uh, I mean, we could, we could go through all of them and then add some things, but let's try to... I also want to um, build a specific distortion for this amp. Um, there's a paper... Uh, oh, let me just pull it up right here. Let's see, where is it at? This. I found this paper called Designing Audio Effects Plugins C++. So this is probably, yeah, this is from Will Parkle's uh, book, but uh, it's specifically the Pilati, I'm not sure that's how you say it, but um, that wave shaper. And it's basically this um, flow diagram right here, and it goes into what the LUT wave shaper is and the triode base uh, bias shifter and stuff like that. So it's just a couple of pages and it looks like it's not too difficult to implement. And we've got a couple of uh, visual representations of what should be happening. And um, yeah, so we could try that. But just to get this up and running quickly and get some sound, see if we're on the right track, let's use one of this, uh, one of these distortions I've already made. So this is going to be Um, let's see. Looks like it's not auto-completing for me, which is very cool. There we go. Distortion. Let's do that. Okay, so let's go into prepare. So let's see, let's prepare it. Let's also choose the uh, model, which is set clipper type. So Viator DSP distortion float lip type uh, and then let's do the tube one i guess uh let's see do we have to do anything else like let's see do we have to do anything else there's pair reset set drive set thresh ceiling mix output Okay, that should all be fine, but let's uh, go ahead and do this. Let's set drive and let's get uh, in a tree state. Raw parameter value it is input ID and it's an atomic, so we load it. Yeah, and while we're here, let's do our typical, um, let's see, what do we call it? Uh, oh, no, update params is what I usually call it.
let's go implement that real quick. You can go put it at the top near um, right under parameter change. Update params. There we go. And what we're going to do is call update params every time something changes. And also going to call it at the end of repair. And we're going to put our uh, actual update logic here. And last but not least, we need to actually set a listener so that when we change the input, something happens. So let's do add parameter listener to input. Uh, that goes to this. And then we remove it in the destructor. Remove, yep, input this uh, that should be good all right let's see if it does anything oh what do we got here oh it's just some stupid uh Oh, it's the images. Okay, so what I need to do is uh, go into Vitor DSP. I need to figure out a better way to do this. Um, I need to pull the assets folder from my Vitor DSP and put it in the uh, the AmpSim project source. So I just put it in the source folder. So we go source, add existing, and the assets that I copied from Viator DSP that has a couple of knobs and buttons and stuff. There's uh there's gotta be a way I can do that without needing to copy that over and stuff, but worry about that another time. Let's get this amp up and running first. Oh, it's kind of taking forever. Oh, it's probably all those images and stuff. All right, there it goes. Let's see. Amp Sim. Now, it's not going to sound perfect because there's always a bunch of filtering you need to do. Uh, to make it sound good and then put the like EQ filters on top of that but we should get something that kind of sounds like an amp all right let's see here let's go into here and okay so let's debug this and see if we get anything in the console Okay. 
So that's good. So the question is, uh, is there something? Oh, I'm stupid. I know what it is. Can anybody guess? That's right. I didn't call process. So we are going to put it before the uh, the speaker module because pretty much on a guitar amp, I mean, speaker is the last thing. I mean, because the entire output section of the amp goes out of the amp into the speaker. So there's really nothing you should put after the speaker unless you want it to be kind of novel or weird or something. Um, so let's see. What, what do we name it again? Amp. Yeah. So let's call process. And hopefully that does it. And let's see. While that builds, I'm going to go run to the bathroom real quick. Looks like it built. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so it kind of sounds like an amp. Uh, it's a little, um, I don't know, fuzzy. So let's see, how did I do this? Oh, last time when I made the amp, um, I actually created a bunch of different plugins. So like what I did was one plugin was just the IR, one plugin was just the distortion, and one plugin was just like some filtering so that I could um, kind of modularly experiment with what part of the circuit needed, you know, filtering or whatever. So let's see if, um, yeah, so let's, let's let it play. And before...
So yeah, this this big peak at about a thousand hertz is pretty important, it seems. And also, um, before we go too far, let's see what it sounds like with um, a well-developed pedal put in front of it. So I'm just going to put, uh, where's that at? Yeah, the, the 808. And then uh, volume all the way up, which is what, you know, it's just what you do. So at the, at the very least, we need a high pass and a uh, uh, some kind of like peaking filter. So let's see. And we also don't know what this sounds like between the, uh... oh, you know what we could do? We can, let's add a switch that lets us turn the IR on and off. Uh, this probably isn't something that we're going to want to keep. We're probably going to have this uh, part of the, well, no, I guess we are going to keep that. Yeah, let's do that. All right, this is going to help us uh, experiment. So let's see. Let's see. Speaker toggle. Yeah, okay, speaker toggle, and then that way we'll create um, a bool. So audio parameter bool, uh, which is called speaker toggle ID and speaker toggle name. And uh, it, it only takes in the initial uh, value, so it's uh, true, meaning on. Okay, so let's add the listener. Speaker toggle. And then what we'll do, uh, for right now, make it as simple as possible. So I'll do, I'll just wrap this uh, speaker uh, process in the bool. So we'll say m tree state dot get speaker toggle. So if speaker toggle is on, do the IR. And this will allow us to have multiple instances open with uh, different pathways open and closed, which I think will be helpful. So let's build that real quick, see if that works. Okay. Yeah, Sim. Thank you. 
Yeah, that's working. Okay. So let's uh let's add another instance. Uh, let's see, the last one will have the speaker on, and this one won't. And then let's experiment with that EQ. So I'll do this. We know we had it like this last line where the EQ was first. Actually, I'm going to just copy and paste it and turn the other one off. Oh, okay, so apparently after the distortion sounded terrible. Oh, you know what else we could do? We could do this where we, we could raise everything starting around 1k before the distortion and then we can low pass after the distortion up to the the uh the midpoint and that way it'll make the distortion a little smoother so uh left is before distortion and right is Thing in this instance it's not gonna work it's still something I want to do for the distortion though right, let's put this back where it was Okay, so I think we, we know that that's at least uh, something we want to put in. So um, it's going to be a, a high pass at about 150 and then a big peak at 1K. And I mean, this is the essence of making the amp. I mean, you can see that, I mean, it's almost there. Now, it sounds a little muddy and dirty. It is my H string and... I find that my A strings tone is really dark and muddy. So maybe if I had uh, one of my six string riffs, like that was in drop C instead of drop A or whatever the A string is in, it might sound better. Uh, but let's let's add these filters and then call that a day. So we're gonna make two Vitor DSP filters. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there we go. Let's 
So two of them there. Let me copy this over and we'll go to prepare and yeah, sure. Let's look at it here. So like that, and then there's also, there's a lot of stuff we have to set up for the filter um, for mine. So I'm going to go into something that already has it set up. Um, actually, distortion does, I think, doesn't it? Yeah, so here's the fuzz filter. So let's uh, take that and we'll put it right here. I'll copy the name over. So stereo mode, yeah, stereo, whatever. Uh, not a low show if this is a high pass, which is a low cut. Q is parametric. That doesn't really matter for us. Uh, so 150 was where we had it. Um, this is a low pass, so it doesn't need a gain. Okay, and then we'll do the other one. So the mid one, this is not going to be a pass filter. It's going to be a, what's it called? yeah, band shelf a metric, uh, actually, yeah, yeah. Parametric is fine. And cutoff is going to be okay. And then we need the gain. And then let's give it. 15 for good measure. And that's probably it. I just need to take these right here. And we're going to put that before distortion. So this process, and we will do another one. Make sure we have the right ones. Yep, pre high pass and pre mid. That'll probably do it. What I'll do is I'll, uh, for the next stream, I'll record some riffs with my six string that are a little cleaner and tighter um, so that we get a good representation of what the sim sounds like we'll do some low riffs and maybe some like lead stuff so that we can hear what it sounds like all right so let's see logic all right let's see what it sounds like now better um, than it did before and we can definitely fine-tune that but you know what it sounds like an amp so yeah I think that's a good place to stop um, like I said next time we'll uh, record some better riffs that are a little cleaner easier to hear what it sounds like uh, we'll work on uh, some more filtering to really fine-tune and make it sound better uh, then we'll start kind of modularly adding distortion types and um, seeing what works best and then build that uh, Pelodi amplifier from the Will Purple paper and I think that'll do it. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you all on Thursday. Join the Discord if you're not in it and uh, yep, I'll see you. All right. Bye.